using current technology, we can actually use this very old innovation to create, as I'm saying here, billions of portals into the microcosmos. So uh, what is our tool? Uh, basically, uh, Foldscope was originally conceived as a ultra-low cost tool, which um, allows you to do microscopy in the field in uh, a very robust format that's um, also very affordable. Um, the, the optics that we're using is a glass ball lens, so it's um, actually very durable. Um, it's, it's almost impossible to scratch the lens itself. And, um, it's, it, and yet it's, it has a, an optical quality which is on par with conventional microscopes. <clears throat> Using our uh, current design, which looks like this, uh, it can carry it in your pocket as you see. Um, it uh, has a magnification of 140x, and yet you can resolve things as small as a bacteria, a red blood cell, or a microorganism. And this is all for a cost of less than $1 in parts. <clears throat> Thank you. The, the tool itself is usable with or without a cell phone, and so you can use it um, just like this by holding it up to a, a light source. I think I touched a button I shouldn't have. There we go. Um, or you can attach a cell phone um, and view uh, the image uh, through, your, um, through the camera on your cell phone. You can capture an image and you can have digital zoom. And if we have little time at the end, I'll show you a quick demo of how that works. So I just want to say a few words about um, how we came up with this design and why, uh, why we feel it's an important innovation. We think a lot about science education and um, how, how children can get inspired to really uh, seek out their dreams. And as part of uh, science education, um, what, what we've seen um, over the years of going out into the field, different parts of Africa and, and in India, uh, there's a lot of work that goes on um, for, for teaching children how, how to learn about science, but not how to do science. And so uh, the, the balance is uh, very skewed in the current educational system on the side of knowledge and very much uh, lacking on the side of experience. And so we wanted to develop a tool that can be expanded to reach every child in the world, or every person in the world for that matter, um, so that they have tools to explore the world around them, um, to look at the microcosmos, and to make discoveries. Um, so this is a picture that I took from a school in Ghana, and you can see that it's uh, lacking in uh, resources. It uh, has uh, desks and chairs, but um, there's, there's nothing hidden on the sides of the picture you can't see here. Um, there's, there's really nothing more in the school except maybe a chalkboard. And so um, this, this is one of our inspirations that, you know, if we can bring tools to um, areas that are in the last mile, um, as um, some previous speakers were, were speaking to, um, I think that that can really benefit a lot of people. So what is our mission um, um, as, as, uh, in making these instruments? Basically, we want to enable communities everywhere, all around the world, uh, to be able to access the experience of science. And uh, we've gone out, um, I just spent the last several months in India doing workshops with over uh, 1,000, probably close to 2,000 students and teachers. Um, and uh, doing um, this, this work was originally started as a part of a PhD research project um, at Stanford um, about six years ago. And uh, part of the, the goal that I had um, in, in working on this was uh, just, just to go out and uh, find um, places um, in Africa and India where, where this can have an impact. Originally, we were thinking about uh, medical applications, um, but we found that um, educational opportunities are, are um, very important as well. And uh, one, one of the important things as, as you're um, you know, distributing this to uh, both to you know, healthcare uh, professionals as well as to uh, teachers and instructors, you hope that uh, they also share it with the children so they have uh, some time to use it themselves. <clears throat> so um, we, um, we started making these tools uh, just last year um, and uh, we have uh, just a small team for doing this. Um, uh, together with my uh, PhD advisor, uh, we, we uh, started this company. 
and uh, we've um, uh, managed to uh, set up manufacturing in China. We're making several different parts, uh, several different um, ways of packaging the tool. And uh, with, with our manufacturing, we've um, managed to uh, reach over 130 different countries around the world and uh, with uh, just about half a million units. And this, uh, this provides a number of different opportunities that we've uh, tried to take advantage of. One of them is building a community. So uh, part of, again, going back to our philosophy, uh, part of the in, important um, op, you know, um, goal that we have in, in creating these is um, not, not just to um, reach people in academic circles, but to take, for instance, $1,000, um, and instead of buying one microscope, you can, you can um, use that to purchase 1,000 microscopes and reach uh, people across a broad area. So this is uh, just a few pictures from some of the workshops we've done in India and different parts of Africa. And um, the, the, the people, um, once we're, we've taken the tool out to them, and they have the opportunity to use it. It's just amazing some of the things that they've uh, found uh, that they can do with it. So we have an online community, uh, microcosmos.foldscope.com. I encourage you all to take a look at some of the projects on there. Um, but um, the, uh, the things that people find uh, that they can use our tool for are, are things that we would never think of ourselves. Uh, for example, someone in Nigeria found that they could use a Foldscope to detect fake drugs. Um, and we've had other people look at uh, cow milk to determine uh, the presence of bacteria in the cow milk. Um, other, in other places, people are looking at fake currency, um, and we have a vast number of users looking at biodiversity. Uh, so there's, uh, there's just a range of applications that we found which are even beyond what we could have imagined. So what is the impact that we uh, hope to have uh, with the tool? Um, so. Um, I just want to emphasize before I go through the list that um, the, the opportunities are both within education but also uh, to influence people to think uh, more carefully about uh, you know, healthcare and about the world around them. So it's about expanding uh, your mind but also about uh, creating a better behavior um, and better lifestyle. Um, so, the, the number one uh, thing that we really hope for is to bring science into everyday life and to make it fun. So that um, people don't think of science as something that's very dry uh, and boring, but something that can be you know, on, uh, on equal footing with um, other things that you do just for fun. Um, we, um, we're hoping to pr provide opportunities for mentorship so that um, you can connect with people in the community around you to learn more about you know, microscopy and about micro, uh, microorganisms and just benefit from the knowledge of those around you. Um, <clears throat> besides that, I mentioned about uh, learning to do science rather than just learning about science. And um, we see this tool as, a, um, as the beginning of a whole series of low-cost tools that we'd like to develop, which are providing a platform for uh, people to, do, uh, to make discoveries that require um, a lot of man hours. So for example, if you have a million uh, microscopists um, distributed over a wide geographic region, then imagine you know, all the different questions you can ask from a scientific point of view that you, you can't really ask effectively if you only have a small number of microscopists working on the same problem. So um, just to give you a sense of what we can do with the microscope, because uh, you might be thinking, well, it's one dollar microscope, what can you really see? Um, you know, it can't be, it can't be really that uh, interesting. Um, I, I'd like to just show you a brief video clip of some reactions to Foldscope, as well as to some images taken with the Foldscope itself. And I'd just like to mention the guy in the center here, at the red jacket, is my uh, co-inventor and uh, business partner for this device. trying to escape from the tape.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so we're, I'm just gonna do a very brief demo for you here. I'm not sure if everyone will be able to see it uh, uh, very well, but I just wanna mention we have, um, we have one of the micro labs uh, coming up right after this, uh, starting even during lunch. So uh, please join us for that if you like, or else uh, we're also, you can also get your own Foldscope uh, from our website, foldscope.com. Um, so this, this is our um, uh, kit that we're selling online, the Deluxe Individual Kit. And so when I put the unit together, it looks like this. This is a fold scope. And I've already inserted um, a microscope slide from the back. Um, so there's three different viewing modes. Um, I can view it directly with my eye by looking here. I can see um, already the slide I've inserted. Um, second way is I can take a cell phone and I can attach the self. I put a magnetic coupler onto the um, camera on my cell phone and I attach it like this. And then a third way is I can take a light source, such as the light on my phone. I can, uh, and, um, I can attach the cell phone from, uh, on the back of the fold scope on the yellow side and project an image onto a screen. So there's three viewing modes. Um, I'm gonna show you here. So as I mentioned, our uh, magnification is 140X, but with a uh, cell phone, you can get uh, as much as 10X digital zoom in addition. So the sample I'm looking at here is uh, red blood cells from a frog. Um, there's a focusing mechanism on here, so I'm sure you can't, uh, most of you can't see this very well. Let me just get it in focus. And uh, one thing I can do with my phone, as I mentioned, is I can do a digital zoom. And so when I do a digital zoom, the red blood cells uh, become very large. And so um, I think maybe um, many of you can see now, each one of those red circles is an individual red blood cell from a frog. And this is using a lens which costs you know, less than 10 cents um, in a bill of materials cost. So, so that's, um, that's basically our technology. I think I'm uh, just about out of time, but uh, please join us later today and um, you know, uh, come to explore the microcosmos. Thank you very much.